The Experimentation and Trials Group of the British Army recently conducted tests of the ground-based kamikaze drone intended for tank destruction at the Salisbury Plain training area. The Defence Express reported this. It is noted that one company from the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Yorkshire Regiment participated in the tests according to Army recognition. The tests involved the Russian T-80 BVM tank, likely in an incomplete state, as the target for the ground-based anti-tank drone. There are limited sources where the British military could acquire the Russian T-80 BVM, likely in a damaged or incomplete state, for testing. A more intriguing question is what the British may have exchanged to obtain this captured tank. Returning to the ground-based anti-tank drone tested by the British Trials Group, it's notable that details on this specific development are limited, adding to the interest surrounding it. It is reported that the ground-based kamikaze drone is capable of moving across various terrain types with both remote control and autonomous navigation available for guiding it to its target. The amount of explosives this device can carry has not been disclosed. Furthermore, the British Army emphasizes that this stage is primarily a technology demonstration intended to assess integration methods for tanks and ground drones on the battlefield. Based on these findings, they will later consider procurement of specific remotely operated systems. Defense Express notes the significance of this systematic approach. Although reports have indicated that Ukrainian defenders have used ground kamikaze drones against Russian forces, the British military aims to systemize the use of these drones as anti-tank weapons. Such a structured approach could be instrumental in enhancing the Ukrainian armed forces' capabilities. The Russian T-80 tank, a heavily used asset in the Ukrainian conflict, is a descendant of the T-64, a Cold War-era tank. Initially impressive with its advanced features and mobility, the T-80 has shown significant vulnerabilities in the current war. Tanks are ideal in theory for sweeping across geography like the plains of Eastern Europe to secure more territory. But Russia's use of its tank forces has not gone especially well. Thousands upon thousands of tanks have been destroyed. Many of these are outdated Cold War era tanks inherited from the Soviet Union like the T-80 main battle tank, which Russia has deployed heavily. Thousands of T-80 tanks were produced before the Soviet Union collapsed, 4,839 to be exact. Russia still possesses the majority, but Ukraine absorbed their fair share of T-80s too. The T-80 did not see much action until recently. During the Russo-Ukrainian War, both sides have relied on tank warfare generally and the T-80 specifically. The Russians have already lost hundreds of T-80 tanks since the war began. The Russian Major General Pavel Yurevich Klimenko, who was destroyed by the Ukrainian armed forces, turned out to be a fan of torture cases. As it turned out, the commander of the 5th Separate Motorized Rifle Donetsk Brigade, named after the first leader of the DPR, A. V. Zakarchenko, organized a torture basement in Donetsk. Everyone who did not want to go on meat assaults ended up in Klimenko's underground residence. They extorted money from the undesirables, and in the end, they were sent to slaughter anyway. Russians reacted unexpectedly joyfully to the liquidation in Ukraine of the commander of the 5th Separate Brigade of the Russian Army, Major General Pavel Yurevich Klimenko. A number of users on social networks stated that Klimenko is no hero at all and that at least 10,000 Russian soldiers died because of him. My tank comrade was killed. They sent him to storm and he naturally died, emphasized Ruslan Abuzov. This is for all the men whose lives you played cards with, added Anastasia Livanova. Here is the price of your hero. The return came, wrote a certain Victoria Ivanova. According to the latter, Klimenko sent her terminally ill son to the basement after learning that he had applied for the VKK. The soldier occupier had his money and phone taken away and was taken to the toilet at gunpoint. As a result, Victoria Ivanova's son went missing. The mother of the missing soldier claims that the Major General's body is already being transported to Rostov. Ivanova is convinced 
that Klimenko was never at the front but spent his days in his office. The woman suggested that the commander of the 5th Separate Mechanized Brigade could have simply been ordered and eliminated by his own people. He deserved it. It's a pity he didn't suffer. Ivanova summed up. Russian publics write that General Klimenko was riding a buggy when he was attacked by Ukrainian FPV drones in the Krasnogorovka area in Donbass. Putin's general died in the intensive care unit of the Republican Traumatology Center in Donetsk. The channel Ukraine 365 reports. As it turned out, on November the 6th, General Klimenko decided to make a trip in a buggy from the checkpoint of the 3rd Motorized Brigade to the checkpoint of the 5th Motorized Brigade. At that moment, he was attacked by FPV drones. Then Klimenko was evacuated to the Petrovsky District Hospital and later he was transported to the Republican Traumatology Center. There, his condition worsened and resuscitation efforts did not produce the desired effect. Pavel Klimenko was born in 1977. He was drafted into the army in 1994. He became the commander of the 5th Motorized Brigade in the summer of 2024. The family lives in occupied Sevastopol. A robotic remote-controlled drone loaded with explosives flew 700 miles or 1,126 kilometers to the Russian Caspian Fleet dock in Dagestan where it hit three ships at once. Forbes reported, this drone crashed into a cluster of warships moored near the pier. The 700-mile raid isn't the deepest strike by Ukraine's A-22 drones, but it's close. Back in May, one of the 100-mile-per-hour drones struck an oil refinery in the city of Salavat in Russia, more than 800 miles from the front line. According to Anton Herashchenko, a former advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine, three ships were damaged by the explosion, including two Gepard-class frigates, the largest ships of the fleet, as well as a smaller Buyan corvette. Damaged vessels can make up almost a third of the Caspian fleet. The A-22 drone that was struck was designed to respond to Russian strikes on Ukrainian cities and bases, in particular with a number of locally produced drones and surface-to-air missiles configured for ground strikes. The humming of the A-22 over the anchorage of the Caspian fleet emphasizes how quickly Ukraine has moved to expand its range of weapons of deep destruction of local production. The article reads, Journalists recall that in February 2022, Ukraine did not have a single long-range weapon and now there are several types of them. In order to retaliate against Russia's own strikes on Ukrainian cities and bases, the Ukrainians have had to improvise with an array of locally made drones and surface-to-air missiles tweaked for ground strikes. Now, three months before Trump re-enters the White House, that improvisation could assume even greater importance. Right now, there is a lot of uncertainty about Trump's impact on the Ukraine war, wrote Samuel Ramani, a professor of international relations at Oxford University. But if Trump does as Republicans have threatened to do and cuts Ukraine off from U.S. aid, Ukraine will still have ways of prosecuting its war of survival. The authors of the article also mentioned that Ukraine has recently completed the development of a missile drone with a Palyanitsia turbojet engine, a hybrid cruise missile with a range of up to 400 miles. It's not as far as the A-22 drone flies, but where drones for sports aircraft are made manually in small quantities based on existing gliders, Palyanitsa can be mass-produced from scratch by the Ukrainian drone industry, which is developing the material red.